Michael Conlon, how are we doing? All good, man. Good to All see good. you. Good to see we're you. We're a little too. bit further away than we normally would be if we were talking. That's true. Um, That's true. First of all, your brother's a legend. <laughs> I have to open the conversation with that. And this conversation has yeah. been completely changed from this morning because of a conversation with your brother. Okay. I'm going to ask you first before I tell you, how important is he at the moment in your career? He's the most important guy in my career. He's the guy who's gave my career. He's the guy who has everything going on behind the scenes. He's working harder than anybody I know. Without him, this wouldn't be possible. This, this fight, which is coming up, would not be happening. He's doing everything. Match, done, matchmaker or ticket seller at this stage as well, I hear. I think he's done over £60,000 with tickets. So maybe more, maybe 100 I think, actually. Now. Having two brothers involved in the same sport, do you feel that this is a natural progression, maybe, of that, like, guide, I'm not saying, like, guiding the way, maybe, for your, or the mistakes that he has seen that's happened in boxing in the past, and now it's a little hand on the back of the shoulder to make sure your career goes smooth? You know, I never thought of it when I was, when we were coming up and he was still boxing, but there isn't no better person to help gave my career, and, and no person I have more trust in gave my career than Jamie. It was kind of, I was always, if Jamie had to stop boxing when he was 16 and I was, I think, 11, I would have stopped boxing. I wanted to be Jamie. I wanted to do everything he was doing. And then, obviously, he went professional. I wanted to go professional. I had a lot of things going on in the amateurs and um, winning everything. But if he had to finish that stage, I would, I would have kept going because I was so deep into it. But if he had to finish when he was even 18, I probably would have finished. So. He's very, very important to every part of my career. I, I say that from the perspective that I don't know if he'd want me to use the phrase management or manager. Mm. I would actually consider him like an anti-manager at this <laughs> stage, but he cares deeply about your interests and your career. So it's like all the good aspects of a manager minus the, here, you owe me 25% of your money at the end of it, manager. Yeah, that's true. And the fact that you know, a lot of fighters can, if something goes wrong, they can shoot at their manager and blame their manager. If I shoot at him or blame him, I'll, I'll get a slap in the head. Yeah, or if something goes wrong and I ring him up and I say, listen, this is happening, he'll tell me shut up and not to worry about it. And he's, he's completely in control of my career. He's probably one of the only men of fear um, outside of the ring. <laughs> so um, he's very, very important. Well, has taken to that side of it as if it is the thing he's been doing the entire time that he's been training for, as opposed to just like a fighter turned you know, like assistant yeah. manager, look after. I think, it's, I think it's the way forward. And the last thing that I would say on it is, is from your experience initially, is there a message nearly to fighters to say, keep an eye on who is around you, who is in your corner, who's actually fighting for your vested interest or who's fighting for the percentage at the end of the day? That's 100% true. Now, I'm, I'm very lucky to have him because money isn't his goal. Making me a world champion is, my, is his goal and is my goal. And... You know, you get, obviously get a lot of managers. And most, it's, it's the name of the game, you know, they're in it to make money, they're not in it for anything else, really. Um, if they can make you a world champion, they're going to make more money, so that pushes them even more. Whereas I know money is, is not his objective here, it's, it's to make me, you know, the best fighter I can be and, and the fighter he believes I can be, which, you know, is very, very important. He's someone who believes in me, someone who has no interest in money towards me and kind of has, has my back completely. I understand the people who have the shortest commute to the fight this weekend are your parents. Yep, two a minutes. Stones throw away. Two minute walk. Is two minute walk. When the festival's on, they just sit in the garden. They don't even go to the festival. They just sit in the garden and, and listen to it from the garden. So, um, whereas we go down and get involved in it, they just sit in the garden and sit at the back garden, have a, have a drink and, and listen to the music. For those um, outside of Ireland that don't know, the fight is coinciding with a huge event in Belfast this week called the Fela. Yeah. What are your memories of that as a kid? You know what, it's, it's, it's a community festival in West Belfast. It's, this is the 31st year and you know, it, was, it was kind of brought in during the troubles by the people of West Belfast. They kind of give the people something to have and, and to celebrate. Um, celebrate the, the culture of West Belfast, the city itself and, and its people. And it's, it's sports people too. So, you know, I'm, I, I went to the Fela for many, many years and had many, many a fun times. I have snuck, snuck into it a lot of times um, when I was younger. But even over the last few years, it's been fantastic. Fela 30 last year was, was something special. And when the opportunity was, was brought to us about 
you know, me being a part of it, I was blown away and I, I was just like, I want to get it done, I want to get it done. And it was actually brought at the start of, the, uh, start of my career by um, Podrick Murray, who's a solicitor in Belfast who helps run the FILA. And I said it to uh, my manager at the time, which, who was Muffy Mecklen, but never really acted on it. And then last year, which was my second year as a pro, I said we were at the FILA at watching the Wolf Tones. And uh, they, they came over, Kevin Gamble came over and Paddy was over and they were talking and say, listen, what do you think about it next year? And Jamie was there and Jamie's ears peaked. And he says, well, we've got to do this. And I says, 100%, look at the atmosphere here. It's unbelievable. Can you imagine this being a boxing arena? I couldn't, but once, once I've kind of seen the lay and how it's going to look, it's got, it's got my full attention. It's really something that I'm excited about. Were you excited at the prospect of actually making money from fighting at the Fela as opposed to fighting at the Fela? <laughs> you know what? It's, it, it's the park itself, the Falls Park. I've had many fights in the Falls Park, which I had never been paid for. I actually think I've got a kick in the Falls Park before by a few people, so um, it was different this time. I'm going into the park <laughs> and I'm going to earn money for fighting someone. So it's a bit like uh, some burn up with boxing. <laughs> yeah, it's, a re it's a reverse of what you thought could have, or of what didn't happen, I suppose, when you were younger. Yeah. From that, though, I think that because it's at a festival that brings so many people together, Yeah. My, like my favorite thing about an Irish athlete doing anything is that around the world you are going to have so many people tuning in in pockets mm -hmm. of either in Canada or Australia or anywhere and they're watching because an Irishman's fighting. Yeah. Do you it's, get that it, vibe? It's very, very special. Yeah. Being, being Irish is very special. Um, everywhere you go in the world, you'll find an Irish bar. Um, you'll find Irish people. And, you know, I, I boxed in Australia. I boxed there in my, I think it was my third my third fight on the Pacquiao undercard. Yeah. And the tons of Irish come out to support me. It was phenomenal. In Brisbane, um, in the middle of the summer, our summer, their winter, but it was still like 30 something degrees. So um, it was really warm. And, and I, had, I had my own fan base at, at this 55,000 seater arena. And it was phenomenal, but I feel it everywhere. When I go to New York, it's like, it's basically my home. I have had most of my fights in, in, in Madison Square Garden. And it's just like I'm fighting in Ireland because that much Irish come out to support me there. Yeah. Do you think though that yes, you can be an Irish abroad, but there won't be anything diff better than fighting at home? To me, in my opinion, I don't know a lot of people will disagree with me because they're from different countries, but Ireland's the greatest country in the world. Obviously. 100%. Good. Everything about it, you know, it's not too warm, it's not too cold. It could be a little bit more sunny, yeah. um, but you know, we don't get no earthquakes, we don't get no tornadoes, anything like that. It's, it's the safest place and the best place in the world, in my opinion. And the thing that has annoyed me more than anything recently about Ireland is the narrative that said they do great for such a small nation. They do, they do well for such a small wee place, don't they? No, we do well in everything, mate. Yeah. <laughs> like, we do, we do well in absolutely well. everything and we excel in the things that we yeah. care about, whether it's our poets being respected around the world or our athletes being respected around the world. Mm -hmm. You surely, not to put more pressure on you, but you must appreciate that you get to carry that legacy of maybe people that you looked up to when you were younger doing the same thing. 100%. And it's, it's not just like it's a new thing, as you say. Um, Irish people have been doing it for time, beyond time. You know, going around the world and bringing the culture of Ireland, bringing the sport and heritage of Ireland. If you even look at Aussie rules and stuff now, how, how much Irish players are playing it. And, and they're all GAA players, really. Do you know anything about Gah? I do. Okay, have you seen the clip of the Aussie rules player that's going a bit viral at the moment for doing the dummy? I did, I. Yeah. I've seen it, I. <laughs> the, most, the most simple GAA skill you ever learn is making Australians think that this man is the second coming. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> so it just shows you, and, and then, like, I'm seeing loads of things on Twitter nowadays about, like, Americans here watching hurling, and they're going absolutely crazy. Reaction it's, videos yes, to Americans reaction watching hurling. Videos. Yes. Fastest field sport in the world, probably one of the best sports in the world, in my opinion. Um, but just hasn't been seen. Absolutely. So, you know, I think, and then if you look at all, the, our boxers, look at our boxers, look how much famous boxers, look how much UFC fighters nowadays, um, or MMA fighters, sorry. Um, it's phenomenal. We're, 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 we are a small nation, but we do pack a huge punch. And, and here in Belfast, we pack an even bigger punch, I believe. I think out of our 16 or something Olympic medals, nine of them are from Belfast. Yeah. What is it? What's different? Or can you, do you have a guess? Is it the gyms? Is it the 
is it the otherwise you'll be fighting on the street and maybe you should go into a gym and learn how to be able to defend I yourself think, thing? I think it's just it's bred in this. Um, obviously with everything that's happened here, the troubles and stuff back in the days, you know, people boxing was a saviour to many, many people. And it is around the world, but especially here in Belfast when it was a war torn city. I think on my road alone, on the Falls Road, within like a two mile radius, there's over twenty boxing clubs. So that's that's massive, like, and I think everybody, and they're always packed as well. I think everybody in Belfast respects boxers, and, and that's that's a, ph a phenomenal thing because a lot of a lot of things nowadays they don't respect fighters and they they criticize. But Belfast is a boxing city and a very supportive city. That's part of the respecting a fighter is something that I'm very happy that you said because mm -hmm. I feel that in this world that we live in. This is going to be consumed on the internet and shared on the internet and whatever on the internet. The same person who shares this could be the same person to tweet someone on your undercard on Saturday night saying you're shit. You yeah. just got knocked out. Yeah. Why, are, why is that allowed? Why, why are people like that? You know what? When, when I see that stuff, it, it, it annoys me. And I try not to feed into it too much because if you're a fader and someone's talking you no know, smuck to you or shit to you, whatever you want to say, you're really basically letting someone come into your living room and start in front of you and say, you're the worst fighter I've ever seen, you are not good. You would never let someone walk into your living room and do that because you kick them clean back out. Um, but yeah, listen, people seem to have, everybody has an opinion and social media kind of voices everybody's opinion now and, and makes people feel like they're important. People just go to talk shit to get reactions and get likes and, and, and get retweets. And you know, I, I know I've replied to a few trolls and they've been like, cheers for the reply after talking shit. It's like, you just wanted me to reply, why did I do it? But, you know, I think that's the, that's the problem with, with modern day society where, where everybody's too stuck on their phones and, and too easily to criticize when, you know, if they were in the same position, they would not be doing so. Do you think with what has happened in boxing within the last couple of weeks that there is a shift that we're going to see and maybe empathy towards fighters that we're not going to start? I think it's like social media. It's going to be a two second blip and it'll be forgot about and people will continue to talk shit. For the next two weeks, three weeks, people will probably have respect. And then, like everyday life, it moves on and people will start talking shit again. Because these things, with, with, with our world now and with social media, important news does not last. Big things do not last. It's then everybody wants the next best thing. And especially on social media, you know, you could see the best football skills in the world or the best fight in the world. But everybody just wants to see what's next. Does that make this any more enjoy any less enjoyable for you in the in what you're chasing, knowing that no. it's never gonna be enough because you're always gonna want another one, you're always gonna want to go a step higher, you want to go get that more step further in your career. I feel that from speaking to athletes for a long time, it's like the buzz of a win or the buzz of a contest it wears off too long. very, very quickly. Yeah. And I've always felt uncomfortable when the narrative switches to so what's next? Who you fighting next? You get out of the ring and it's the first the, thing asked. Yeah, this man hasn't cooled down yet. He has literally barely interacted with his family for the last 12 weeks. Yeah. And now you're asking him, will he do it again? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, like, I can't, I, I can't verbalise, which is terrible because it's my job to be able to verbalise it, but I can't verbalise how disrespectful and insulting that yeah. is to a fighter. That really is. Like, I'll, I'll have been in training for this one for 16 weeks. And I know the first question after which will be asked me is which world champion they want and when do you want them that will be the first question asked and that's that's kind of what everybody wants to know what is next let me sit down let me have a holiday let me see my kids that's what's next well then where is the holiday okay. oh we're going to greece we're, oh, going, to greece. Uh, we're going to greece <laughs> we're going to greece we're going to greece the the thing that i have become more more attached to recently especially within within ireland is the example that is being set i know you're saying that yeah maybe in different generations with the troubles and with like whatever. As someone from Dundalk, I would be ignorant mm. to say that I know the history of Belfast and I'm yeah. not trying to come across as that. But why is it different now? Why is it different for the kids now? Are they still gonna be as enthused in boxing even though maybe they don't have the hardships that were there maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago? I think it's different now is because how much history we have created in the short space of time during those times, during the last few Olympic games, um, how well amateur boxing has done over the last number of years. Pro boxing now kind of took a big boost from the kind of people who were in the amateurs turned pro. And 
it's kind of give a lot more people you know a reason to go to the gym seeing like seeing us on the world stage seeing the other fighters on the world stage seeing the likes of you know Carl Frampton myself you know even Conor McGregor and stuff seeing how, see how they're all perform seeing that they're just the same as them working class like well for me I'm, I'm a working class kid so other working class kids in my area can look at me and go I can do what he's done and that's what you want to do you want to inspire the next generation and I believe that's what most of us modern day fighters are doing to me like I've you can't see I get goosebumps from occasion I get goosebumps from energy and you just saying there that you're inspiring a different generation of children at the event where so many of your generation would have been inspired whether that's music culture festivals or just having a place in the Falls Road to be all together uh, during the summer to celebrate it yeah. like this is full circle you just saying that has made my whole body stand yeah. up really and sh I feel it I can feel the hurt in my body standing up I can't wait for your walkout the walkout will be fantastic like the walkout I, will be fantastic and and, and it's not, I'm a proud Irish man and I've always, I've never been afraid to say it. I'll continue to be a proud Irish man. I'm not going to change for nobody. I am who I am. I want to inspire the next generation yeah. in sport, you know, and show them the heights that a kid, from, a kid like me from West Belfast, you know, with, so at, at the stage, you know, one, at one stage there when I was growing up, West Belfast had the highest to say right in Europe. So I just want to show like a kid from me can kind of come out of that. Uh, and reach the highest heights in sport, and any kid from West Belfast can do it because I'm not, I'm no different than the next, the next kid really. I'm just a normal guy. There's, there's nothing special about me. So it's just hard work and, and continued dedication to what I want to do and, and and seeing goals, setting goals, and seeing goals and trying to reach them. On that, because you are motivated by what your goals are and your dedication is. Mm. You're saying that you are yourself though, so you're not trying to say anything inflammatory to try and get people's attention to watch this next fight. No. Are you banking on them appreciating your skill? Or do you even, at that stage, I'm not saying you don't care about making new fans, yeah. you'd rather make three fans who appreciated your jabs and slips and footwork yeah. than 300 fans who thought you roasted some lad on Twitter? 100%. Yeah. I don't believe in this kind of social media world. Really. Even Twitter, even Instagram and these likes and follows, they don't defame me and they don't defame anybody, but people nowadays feel they do yeah. people who people think there's someone if they have more followers than another person people think there's someone if they're getting more likes than another person that is not me i do not care i, I could wait my social media out now and be a family man uh for the rest of my days i could i could listen if i had enough money i i, I would if i had enough money in the bank now i could i could retire and just work as a postman and, uh, and make a simple wage would you be happy with that it's no problem because it's, it's your no family problem. that's the it's important my thing it's not my family is my is my motivation I want to give them the best life possible. If I had enough money to give them the best life possible now, I would retire and be a postman. It's no problem. The only people I motivate, is my, uh, motivate me is my family. And I'm not motivated by cars. I'm not motivated by huge homes or, or luxury watches. What motivates me is to do well for, for my family, my people, my community, and inspire the next generation. Do you have one or two kids? Two. 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 What's it been like moving around with, for the training and stuff like that? How have they settled? You know what? They they stay in Belfast, so my my, my at the time. I, I when think I was, when I talked to you last, I think the kids might have been I was there. Living, I was living in LA when we yeah. spoke last, and you know me and my daughter it was it was my daughter was the only one that little man's only born last year, and it was me, her, and Shauna, and we were living out in LA. Marina the other, it was beautiful, it was lovely, but it wasn't Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, so when I when we came back and I decided I was going to train with Adam Adam Booth in London. I says, listen, it's better you used to stay at home, get a solid base. Shauna was pregnant. We were having baby number two. And I says, listen, we need some support because I am not going to be here. Even if I'm here, I'm not going to be able to help you. I'm dedicating everything I can, sacrificing everything I can to be the best me I can be, to provide for, for, for you. And that's, that's what I've done boxing for. It's kind of all I know. Has Shauna appreciated that from the start? Has she been on board with that? I, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Nah, listen, as, I, I can yeah. be straight up honest with you. I'm very, very lucky and I'm very, uh, and complete, that's complete honesty because what she does, I couldn't do. And she doesn't complain. Yes, she'll want a nice holiday away after something to spend time with me. Um, and the other time she'd just say, she'd probably say, like, you don't spend any time with me. I was, I'm just, I'm with the kids 24 seven. But, she has my back completely. Um, she gives up everything for me to kind of look after the kids, which, 
you know, is very, very hard in, in, in modern sport. Yeah. We had spoke about the severity maybe a little bit indirectly, but over the next month on all of their fights, Top Rank will be honoring Maxim Dadashev's memory. For me, having been the only person in Ireland with the footage of Joe Carvalho versus Charlie Ward in 2015, I think I understand and care about this a lot more than people should be talking about or are willing to talk about. Has it changed how you look at fighting? You know what? Maybe a few years ago, Urth, even though now every, uh, everything is more high risk for me with, with, with having two kids and stuff, I have my mindset has been like bulletproof at the minute and I can't navigate myself around it by, by thinking about like what happens in everyday life what happens in every job in, around the world. You know, people go out to drive a taxi and they never return home. People go out fishing and they never return home. You know, people die every day in their workspace and, you know, it's something that you don't believe is going to happen, but there's always a possibility. There's higher risk in boxing, yes, but there's 12 people, I think, now in the last 11 years that have died. That's a small number. It's never a small number, but compared to most jobs, that's a small number. So that's how I've kind of navigated myself around the situation and not to dwell on it too much. I think even in comparison to the amount of boxing matches that would have happened in those 11 years, the number would decrease yeah. then even smaller. I look at it from the perspective that now you have actual fighters who are trying to promote fights by saying, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to, like, how can you even joke about that? As, and aside from the fact yeah. that I know deep down this is all bullshit because all fighters respect each other because you're all mm. terrified about what's about to happen and yes you have to play a little bit of a yeah. bravado to say like I'm going to be tougher than you but every fighter must respect every other fighter otherwise I don't think you're a fighter 100% and, and you do get the likes of Deontay Wilder have to, have to say his name when, when he says he wants a body on his record and he said it more than once um, so he probably does and but that's not, that's, that's not, until it happens, exactly. That's not something you should say. And then you get fighters saying, I'm willing to die in the ring. Come on, man, shake your head. I'm never willing to die in the ring. I've got family and kids. Boxing not the end goal. Being, being set and sail on a boat somewhere in a, in a sunny country is, is the end goal with my family. You know, some people probably want to do it with just a woman, so. Um, for me, no, listen, I, I've kind of navigated myself around it. I had feelings towards it. The first day when it, when it happened, I contacted Jamie and I said, did you see what happened? Because I was on many cars with Maxim. Maxim, sorry. Um, and I knew him. I've seen him. He's a lovely guy. We, we spoke many a times. Um, and I was shocked because it was like, that's someone who I've actually been around and knew. Most of the time, it's, it's, it's not someone you know, really. But when it's someone you know, it, it can, it, it's different. It changes you know? your perspective. It does change situation. your perspective. And then knowing he had a little kid, a uh, uh, two-year-old or something, and, and, and the wife. So, you know, it was very, very sad. Um, my thoughts and prayers go to his family and, and you know, his, his kid especially. But for me, it's not something I'll think about. Yeah. It's not something that I'll dwell on. As I said, many, 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 many other jobs in the world which you risk your life um, a lot more than what you do in the ring. Does it make you appreciate the side of it that you love even more though? Because I know that any athlete that I've spoken, any athlete that I've been interested in that I speak mm -hmm. to, I know that they flourish when they're in there, that they want to be nowhere else but in there. And despite the nerves, despite whatever, it's actually the fight that is the most enjoyable part of it because that's like when the freedom happens. You're not yeah. confined to the training regime. You're not confined to, you can do whatever you want because everyone's there to watch you anyway. That's it, you know. My, as a kid in the amateurs, when I, even in the, when I started, when I walked into the gym the first day, I loved the fact of hitting and not being hit. I love that kind of, the, this, the kind of name, in the, name of the game, you know, of boxing is, is hit and not be hit. So I love to be able to go and do that. I love to go in and, like I remember as a kid, I used to stick my tongue out and wink at people and stuff and try to get under their skin from, from a kid. And, and I put that down to my, my father who, you know, he, he kind of molded me up to be the kind of boxer he wanted me to be, a perfect amateur boxer. Um, and I've kind of, that's my style of boxing, so I can keep that as a pro. And, you know, thankfully it's, it's a style which isn't going to get me 
if I have that kind of status, it's not really going to get me in trouble an awful lot. You know, there is times you could get in trouble, but you know, that's the kind of style of boxing which kind of leaves, takes, takes any, any doubt away from what, what's going to happen. I suppose now we can do exactly what, uh, what the person wants to hear. It's like, how is your training camp? How is, what are you going to hit him with? Yeah. What are you going to, no, none of those things. <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it comes down to it though, I, I don't want you to say it's, I don't think of my opponent or anything like that. Yeah. Surely you think of him, but have you anything positive? anything respectful, anything that you think that he's quite good at, is this just, there's no bad blood, yeah. we're just going to fight and at the end of the day we'll shake hands and we'll be happy. 100% it is like that because I've watched him, he's a very good fighter, um, he's very aggressive, he, he knows what he's doing, he has a good defence at times, um, he's coming in the lion's den which he doesn't know what to expect but he's young, he's hungry, he's on a 10 fit win streak and he's coming to take my head off so I have the utmost respect for him, I know how good he can be. Um, and I know anybody who faces me, their game goes up another level because I have like a target on my back since since the debut, since walking out with Connor, everything has been a target on my back. So, you know, I'm, I, I kind of had it since the amateur as well when I was world champion, everybody, I was the guy who needed to beat. So I'm used to it now and I know everybody kind of raises their game when they face me. I'm expecting it, you know, August 3rd, but I believe my game raises when I face the better, the better of opponent, the better, the better performance you see in me, and I believe you'll see that when the fight happens. Do you think it? Not that it can. Um, I don't say like go the other way, but do you ever foresee yourself being the guy going into enemy territory, to be the guy who's the hated guy who's being cheered and jeered, and we don't want this guy to do well, and go yeah. in and beat someone in their hometown? You know what? I, I would love that. Um, I would love the career to be against me sometimes, but I have a fantastic fan base, so it finds, I find it hard to kind of imagine. You know, it may, it may happen. Um, there is their defeaters out there with big, big fan bases. And, you know, I, I, would, I, I don't think I'll ever be just completely booed, but I know that they'll face someone who, you know, they're going to have a, a, a lot bigger uh, support, support than you, but that's the name of the game, isn't it? I suppose to, to, to wrap it up towards this, or this fight or the date was billed as this big Olympic thing because you were going to be refacing against Nikitin. Yeah. Nikitin or Nikitin? I don't Nikitin, know. Nikitin, Nikitin, okay. Nikitin. Uh, that's the, the Nikitin, southern. The, the, the <laughs> that's the southerner in me coming out, sorry. The, um, to me, I think that that becomes a way more interesting fight now yeah. because why waste the reaction, reception and atmosphere that you're going to get on Saturday on that fight yeah. when you're going to get it regardless? Mm and it could just make a little bit more eyes turn towards that rematch? It could, or it couldn't. I kind of believe that I'm a bit too far ahead in my career already as a professional than he is. He turned over after me, obviously. He doesn't have the kind of same with the fights or anything. Um, he's only 3-0. On paper, it looks stupid, but the storyline behind it is fantastic, and the kind of redemption for me behind it looks amazing and f would feel amazing but you know if, if it ever happens again it, it does make it a lot more appealing but it, it hasn't bothered me that it, it changed because I actually got to be very thankful that that fight was made and, and that fight was going to happen. It gave me a different kind of focus, a different kind of mindset for, for this kind of training camp and this preparation. When the fight, even when the fight was announced I felt like I was, my, my mind was bulletproof. I was pissed off for about 10 minutes, and then I just said to Jimmy, get me the next best guy. Yeah. And, and they did, they went out and got Diego Alberto Ruiz, and, and you know, I was very happy. My man said, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't need to go and study the guy, because how I was training and what I was working on, I believe will work against anybody. Yeah. Do you feel though, just to, to run that, not question back, but on the, the, the Olympic aspect of it, is it something that you want to rectify personally? Is it some irrespective of it, or because I'm guessing, like my take yeah. on it is, is that you can't be that way. Otherwise, yeah. you fight emotionally. Therefore, you have a better chance of losing. Yeah, one hundred percent. So you actually can't take that shit. Nah, into it. I, I made I made peace with it the day I seen it with top rank. The day top rank got in touch with me, and, and I seen the day actually after the after after it happened because I seen the reaction of the world, not just like people in Ireland. The whole world had reacted the same way I'd reacted. And that just made it a whole lot easier. People all around doing you know, that. People doing this. And you know what? I know Vladimir and I've, I remember, I know him from the amateurs. I know him from being about the same shows in top rank. He's been on my undercard and stuff. 
we have no bad blood. There is no yeah. bad blood between us. It's, it's not. It's not like I hate the guy. It wasn't his fault. There's nothing I can do. The best thing that could happen for me to rectify everything is I get invited as a guest to Tokyo next year for the Olympics. I would love that. So if, if you're watching, yes, send, me, there send me to Tokyo. Michael Conlon's going to Tokyo next <laughs> year. Course, That's uh, what we want. Do you want to be... Okay, let's say we, we'll finish on this. Yeah. Why would they bring you to Tokyo? Because Are you going to apologise for what you did? Never. No. <laughs> never. I think... Well, it's a different organisation now. It's not that able to run it. So um, I think... Uh, ESPN to send me as, as a reporter or something. Absolutely. You need a cameraman. Uh, I need a cameraman. We have a load of them no, here, but I'll, I'll do it for you. Don't worry about that. <laughs> hit Tokyo. Michael, thank you very much for your time. Really and cheers. Thank for you. what the people will not appreciate. And if I can say even one thing, is that not only should fighters be respected or appreciated for what they do or whatever, you're in the middle of a weight cut right now. Yeah. And that's probably the hardest part of a fighter even getting to a fight to begin with because the yeah. weight cut is unforgivable. And I just wanted to thank you personally for giving us so much of your time during a weight cut because... First of all, people don't generally do that. Yeah. And second of all, they don't have as big of a smile on, on their face as you do. It's the fake teeth, man. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's the, the fake teeth, is it? Oh, They've done the job. I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> Good morning. Thank Michael you. Michael Cameron. Thank, thank you very you. much.